Hi, Alan Stratton from Maswood Turns. For this project, I'm going to make an acorn box. Acorn box are nice because it uses two different woods. The contrast is nice. The shape is simple. The uh, and then add a twig. But I'm also experimenting with the still with the bayonet style mounting so that it can be a box uh, without a complex mount. It's just insert twist about 20 degrees and there we are. So. Uh, Let's make this acorn box. This is a cylinder of birch from a tree that died in my yard. It is dry. I need to trim the ends and cut a tenon. For me, this is cue work. A peel cut works great on spindles. This spindle is a little over two inches in diameter. Too big, but I will trim it later. For the cap, I found a small cross grain chunk of walnut. After finding center, I'm pressing the wood against my spike faceplate. However, my wood is smaller than the spike diameter. No problem. I often use the face of chuck jaws, so this is the same setup. Just rough it round at least on one side. I do not want to get too close to the spikes. Then, of course, a tenon. Now flip it over into a chuck mount on that tenon. After trimming it back and getting a good face, I can drill a two inch hole to, to accept the birch. This is about quarter to three, quarter, uh, three eighths inch deep. Then drill a one and three quarter inch hole for my bushing. This is just deep enough to accept the bushing flush. Then mark the inside of the housing for a little more hollowing on the inside of the lid. But before I go too far, I want to drill a quarter inch hole for a stem. Then finish the hollow. After sanding, I can apply shellac friction polish to the inside of the cap. Now the cap is reversed for an expansion mount using the holes as a mortise. It does not take long to shape a smooth cap. After sanding and applying shellac, I use a Wagner texturing tool to texture the edges. It does not show up as much as I thought it might. Then reapply shellac over the texture. My order should have been reversed. The birch is now mounted to my chuck. After trimming the end, I'm ready to drill. The first mortise is one and three quarter inch for the bushing and only deep enough for the bushing to be flush. Then another hole for the compartment in the acorn. Then a box scraper to enlarge at the very end for the narrowest part of the bushing. I mark the depth so that later I do not make the outside smaller than the inside. I took a moment to sand the interior just a bit, then skim off just a little of the diameter so it can fit into the cap. Again, askew does a great job for a smooth surface. A little more shaping. I can apply shellac to the inside of the and the end. Then part it off.
The birch is now reversed into an expansion mount. Very little more to do now than sand and apply the shellac. I do my epoxy in two steps. First, the bushing into the cap with 30 minute epoxy. After the epoxy hardened, I can wrap the bushing with plastic wrap and put the two bushing pieces together. Then apply the epoxy and let it harden again. After a trip outside to find and carve a twig, this acorn is complete. This one can have a good goodie hiding inside that is accessed with only a slight twist and pull. A lot of options for the acorn. For me, I see it and appreciate spring and new growth. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. It is your last line of defense as it was mine years ago. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Happy New Year to all.